Hi guys! Today I will show you how to paint lava so you can have colorful objects in this month bundle. I tested four different ways to give your options. So, choose your favorite, okay? Alright, let's get it started! Painting lava is like painting fire. It is very important that there is a lot of contrast. Part of the painting must have lots of black, in contrast with red, yellow and orange, so that we have the perception of the lava's illuminated effect. This is an image from a YouTube video, in which we have a real volcano. We can see that the rock is very dark, and how intense the colors of the lava are. This is another important point. In addition to the contrast, to the feeling that it is illuminated, we need intensity, so the colors should be more pure, so that they have a lot of saturation. And if we do a lot of mixing, there is a risk that the colors will become less saturated, and perhaps this may influence the expected result. Looking again at the volcano, dark rock, there is black, but it's not 100% black. It is still daytime, so if it were nighttime, the contrast would be even greater. The rock and the sky would be black, and our perception of the lava would be more luminous. Another important point is to understand the different colors that the lava can present. Like a heat metal, lava varies between red in the colder regions compared to yellow. Yellow is the apex, the lighter color, representing the warmest regions. At the edge of the rock, the lava tends to exchange heat and cool down, becoming more reddish. And as the lava flows, it becomes gray, very cold, with only a few light points. We will try to do that. I will paint the same piece of a small volcano in four different ways, and choose one of the ways to paint the rest of the pieces. But first, I will apply the primer. The first step is to apply black primer with the help of an airbrush. The airbrush makes the process super fast. But it can be a brush, and if you do, I suggest leaving the lava area with white primer or white paint. I will explain why. To solve the color intensity issue, an important thing is the color of the base. If we paint on a dark base, such as a black primer, our perception of color is different if it is on a white base or primer. Take a look. Here, I painted half white and half black. Now, I apply red. See how different it is, how much red is more intense over white. We need that. I'm using a brush to paint in white only the region where it contains lava. Now I will paint the first way. It's the way I see a lot of people painting, doing a gradient towards the center, from the red to yellow. Right in the center, we add a little bit of white, so that the yellow gets lighter. Then, I apply the color deep red, which represents the coldest part throughout the lava region. I dip my brush in the water and get the paint from the wet palette, leaving a consistency that flows well. Not too diluted, to the point of dripping, but slight diluted to the point of flowing well in the application. Now, cadmium red, which is an orange tone, a little further away from the edge. Completing the gradient, I apply yellow. I apply it so that, taking advantage of the fact that the paint is still wet, I can build the gradient by doing mixes on the edge between one color and another. and a little bit of white to make it even lighter, right in the center of the volcano.
I finish with a dry brush on the rock. Dry brushes when we remove almost all the paint from the brush, leaving it really dry. This way the paint will remain only in the highest part, contributing to a highlight effect. I'm using the color pale blue, mixed with a little bit of black. And pure pretty blue, just at the bottom to make it stand out. Now I'm going to paint the second way. Similar to the first, using the same colors, however trying to paint in a more random way. Instead of a gradient towards the center, in an attempt to make it look more natural. Now I'm going to start painting the third way. This time I will prioritize the use of pure paints, aiming for gradient saturation. In other words, in the two previous paintings, I mixed the paint on the edges where two colors meet to smooth the transition and maintain a gradient effect. This time I will avoid mixtures so that the colors maintain their liveliness. So I'm only going to add a new color when the old one is dry. And to speed up the drying process, I'm going to use a hair dryer. And I'm not going to use white, so as not to make the colors pale. Instead of adding white to yellow to make it lighter, I'm going to use another paint, like lemon yellow, which is naturally lighter. Instead of using yellow to lighten orange, cadmium red, I'm going to use another orange, light orange. After applying the cadmium red through out the piece and drying it with a hair dryer, I apply the colors light orange and yellow in a random way, but keeping the center lighter. And I use the dryer all the time to make sure the paint is dry before adding another color. At this point, I already noticed that the light orange color is not very intense, and in fact, it is very faint. But I continue. It was the only orange I had, apart from cadmium red and deep orange, which are very similar, darker, and I wanted to give a color variation, but the result would be much better if it was a light orange more intense. I want to do more details in this piece. As the lava cools and turns gray as it flows, I wanted to give this effect. For this I apply black as a base coat, making some lines. After mixing black and white to make it gray, I apply it over the black lines. And between these lines I apply yellow to leave it very light. I reinforce the luminosity and some reddings, applying lemon yellow. After the dry brush with pale blue on the rock, I took a piece of a sponge and add on deep red. I removed the excess on the paper and applied it to the rock, as if it were some hot spots. Using a sponge to give this kind of effect is a great tip. Finally, for the last test, I will paint this volcano using a water effect for Diorama. Still Water by AK Interactive. I mix it with the deep red color and apply it all over the lava region. Then I mix the products with yellow, 
I apply more to the center. This time I need it to be wet, not dry, because I want the paint to create natural shapes. Mm, I forgot the orange, cadmium red. Gosh, I'm going to have to add it now. Looking at all the pieces, I realized that they really look at hot. And my perception this is the order of intensity for this effect. The first paintings contain more mixtures between the colors and contain white in the central part. By comparison, we found that using more pure colors with more intensity and avoiding using white to maintain a higher saturation are great ways to intensify this light effect. This lava made with still water was cool, but it would have been better if I hadn't caused mixtures using the brush. Now, I will paint other pieces using the techniques of the penultimate painted volcano, with pure colors and without white. I start with cadmium red, wait for it to dry, then apply yellow and a touch of lemon yellow in some parts. At the base of the lava, I apply deep red to make it darker. Now, I want to make the base even darker and increase the contrast. I'm going to use an airbrush to help me to do this smoothly. I start by putting water and Tamiya thinner in a 1 to 1 ratio in the airbrush cup. And with a brush, I take paint from the wet palette to the solvent and mix it to dilute the paint. I use a red one first. I choose the color Naftal Crimson, an ink from Liquitex. It is a very intense red and I think it will be cool. I dilute to make it very smooth, more or less 80-90% solvent and 10-20% ink. But as ink is more liquid than paint, which is pasty, I will dilute it less. I always test. When I apply it to a piece of paper, I see how much it will cover in the piece. And since I want a smooth effect, I need it to be more translucent. To make it even darker, I will apply black. It is a pasty paint and I want it to cover more than the color red. So I'm going to dilute it while maintaining a sufficient covering capacity. I apply only at the bottom. With a piece of sponge, I take cadmium red on the wet palette, remove the excess paint and apply it in the dark area, making light effects and to break the hard transition with black. I will also paint Ragnar Onyx, one of the heroes of Planar Cruise Bundle, as if he were a fire element, very lightened in his stone body. This is the 75mm version. I will paint some parts with dry brush and I will do other part more carefully. Now I apply cadmium red to the entire white part. I'm using the airbrush to make it more uniform and faster. Unlike the times when I just wanted to blend and reinforce shadows, I'm going to dilute the cadmium red paint a little bit. I want it to have a good coverage and cover all the white. Then I dilute just enough for the paint to flow into the airbrush. And in the same way, I take the paint from the wet palette to the airbrush cup to avoid clothing. Throwing pure paint on the airbrush can make it clog. After applying two layers, I let it dry well, using the hairdryer to speed up. I reinforce some points of light with yellow. And after drying, I make a dry brush with black. In this way, the black paint is only on the top, leaving the orange visible and helping to give that luminosity effect. After drying well, again, apply pale blue mixed with a little bit of black and make highlights. So the stone is not completely black, but with a variation and light and shadow. 
I applied pure pale blue in some regions to reinforce the edges. This other part I will do in more detail. I apply white only in the gaps and the deep lines. Afterwards, I apply cadmium red and reinforce light with some yellow spots. And it's very difficult to apply these light colors exactly in the openings. My lines became very thick. To smooth it out, I'm going to apply black and redoing some outlines on the stones. To highlight the stone, I apply mixes between pale blue and black carefully with the brush, making some lines. Comparing the back and the arms, which I did with dry brush and the chest, the later became much more intense and with more light effect. The dry brush was extremely fast and desired enough to look really cool, especially to play with the 32mm version. However, if you have patience and spend more time painting each part carefully, you will achieve a much superior result with an incredible level effect. In this video I was able to show some of the many possible techniques to create a hot lava effect. There is no right or wrong technique, each one takes time and delivers a different result. I hope you enjoyed the video, that these techniques help you to paint your miniatures and that you have a lot of fun creating this type of effect. If you liked this video, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to click on the bell, so you don't miss any video. Bye bye and see you next time!